This conference will now be recorded. So, previous class, in the previous class, we discussed the difference between an arterial ulcer and a venous ulcer, and the concerning difference between the arterial disease and the venous disorder. So, coming, we also discussed about the risk factors involved. So, atherosclerosis is the most common cause of arterial obstructive disease in the elderly people. And the most common uh, has to be involved is the lower extremities. Artery, which is most common involved in, in uh, atherosclerotic disease, is causing uh, peripheral vascular disease of the lower limb, is superficial femoral artery. So, common sites of the artery disease mostly femoral artery and then second, popliteal artery. So, what happens in case of diabetes? In diabetics, the wall gets progressively thickened. This phenomenon is known as a monkey bugs arterial sclerosis, which is a peculiar for a diabetic calcification and all. So, in due course of the time, this uh, thickening of the vessel wall takes place and then there will be calcification. So, whenever calcification takes place, there will be gradual reduction in the blood flow and the symptoms of uh, gradual symptoms of ischemia starts. So the most common artery involved is a superficial femoral artery, a branch of a common femoral artery into superficial femoral artery and profunda femoris. And so in this slide, this is a picture of a arteriosclerotic plague, which is having a necrotic pack with fibrin laden macrophages and fatty material and surrounding inflammatory cells and all, which is an extremity and a centricular cap, atherosclerotic cap composition. So this Buildup of uh, atherosclerotic fatty plaque inside the lumen of the blood vessel. Gradually, as the plaque uh, increases in diameter, there will be decrease. In, uh, there will be decrease in the blood supply. So finally, there reaches a point where the blood supply cannot uh, sustain the requirements of the particular uh, organ involved. So this is the plaque formation and the calcification. So gradually, these. Uh, in case of secondary changes, this plaque formation can could reach to secondary pseudo aneurysm. The thickness of the wall gets destroyed, and gradually there will be decreased flow to the blood vessels, to the limbs, so resulting in claudication type of pain. So, the clinical manifestation, as we already discussed. It is intermittent claudication. Claudication means uh, after uh, walking for a certain period of certain time and certain uh, certain distance, the patient develops pain, particularly in the calf region, because the muscle supply uh, as the most common on artery involved is the superficial femoral artery. The distal to the superficial artery is most commonly involved. So there will be cramping, cramping pain after walking a particular amount of distance, which is known as claudication distance. After the patient, uh, after this patient suddenly feels pain in the calf region, and then he takes rest for a period of two to three minutes, or some five to ten minutes or so. In in due course, because of uh, less requirement of uh, the working muscles, there will be decreased blood. Uh, there will be decreased uh, requirement of the blood blood flow the current concerned muscles. So the supply and demand almost matches, and then the pain of the patient decreases so it is also described as the cry of the dying nerves so gradually claudication pain the distance decreases and finally there will be rest pain rest pain is indication of a critical limb ischemia critical limb ischemia is a point uh, which is uh, uh, which signifies that critical limb ischemia means beyond this point the limb is not salvageable this is critical to this saving of the limb and beyond this point you cannot save the limb from the gangrenous changes and there will be cold numbness and uh, secondary changes of diabetic neuropathy so uh, two, uh, there are two classifications regarding the manifestations of the peripheral vascular disease one is the rennie fontaine classification and the other is the rutherford classification rutherford classification is relatively new which is uh, most commonly used in nowadays Grade zero, it's asymptomatic. One, two, three corresponds to mild, moderate, and uh, severe claudication pain. 
grade four. Grade four, it is ischemic breast pain, as we already discussed. Breast pain signifies critical limb ischemia because beyond this point, there is no the limb cannot be salvaged, and then minor tissue loss, and then major tissue loss. These are the classification of the Rutherford classification system. Minor tissue loss means in, uh, small ulcer and focal gangrene and all. Major tissue means the one which requiring amputation. So, if we take a comparison between uh, Fontaine's classification and the Rutherford's classification, both here it starts from one and here it starts from zero. Asymptomatic, uh, moderate to severe claudication, both are included in Fontaine's region 2B, and then ischemic pain and then ulceration. Whereas in Rutherford's classification, asymptomatic, mild, moderate, and severe. Moderate and severe are given two different grades, and grade four corresponds to ischemic brain. And then here, ulceration and gangrene both come under a single stage in case of Fontaine classification. Whereas in case of Rutherford's classification, minor tissue, minor tissue loss comes under grade four. Category 5 and uh, major tissue loss comes under category 6. So, this is the corresponding table between both these classifications involved in the peripheral vascular disease. So, one the most useful test in case of peripheral vascular disease, in any case, in any patient experiencing symptoms of peripheral vascular disease, is Doppler ultrasonography or the duplex sonography. Duplex sonography means Doppler ultrasound plus beam. Doppler test plus B mode ultrasonography. Doppler sonography. It is uh, there will be a transducer spray. You will apply gel over the part which need to be examined. Then the high frequency sound waves. If there is any uh, occlusion or calcification, there will be depending upon the frequency change, you will establish whether the artery is having a monophasic flow or a biphasic flow or a triphasic flow. And coming to this, the other thing is you need to compare bl blood pressure in both the arms and both the legs in case of any peripheral vascular disease case. So one more important diagnostic test is the ankle break brachial pressure index. This image signifies uh, ankle brachial pressure index. Here, here, uh, just like your regular uh, BP cuff, you will tie a cuff and you will inflate the blood pressure beyond a certain point and then you will place a transducer probe handheld Doppler probe over the artery which you need to examine generally it's brachial artery in case of upper limb and tibial artery in case of lower limb so the test is ankle brachial pressure index because and then you will compare uh, you will draw a ratio between these two normally it's uh, 1.9 or less uh, it's 0.9 or less. If it is more, it significantly the artery is severely glazed, and, and uh, it's if it is less than 0.3 to 0.5, then the limb becomes ischemic, and there is reduced blood supply to the limb. So main the management is management is guiding mainly the important test. Mainly you should uh, uh, you should modify the risk factors and modify the lifestyle and bring about lifestyle changes as most of these are concerned regarding the diabetes, obesity, cholesterol, metabolism and all these. So main motive is as most of the limbs become salvageable beyond a certain point, identifying at risk patients and counseling them so that uh, they won't have any severe disease, they won't be progress to any severe disease. So the management, the main concern is pointed upon prevention, just like avoiding sm smoking. Smoking is a single major cause of uh, peripheral vascular disease, which could be modified, modifiable risk factors. Smoking, atherosclerosis, all these are comes in modifiable risk factors. Whereas uh, cases of coagulation abnormalities like hypercoagulability, protein C deficiency, protein S deficiency, all these are uh, genetical, mostly genetical, and they are not modifiable. So the main the main intervention in regarding surgeries 
and there is pharmacological management which which improves blood vessel and uh, relieves the vasoconstriction there are multiple drugs involved well, such as uh, xanthin derivatives like uh, pentoxylin and stilos trental all these all these things uh, they are just for symptomatic relief if you want uh, the main crucial um, uh, treatment involved is sur either surgical method or endovascular treatment in recent days the interventional radiologists they are doing uh, endovascular treatment so coming to embolectomy embolectomy it can be done either through interventional radiological procedure or on endotrach embolectomy means in case of sudden events there could be uh, dislodgement of an embolus in either secondary to valvular heart disease and then this embolus uh, it reaches it reaches a point of uh, least it reaches a it reaches and lodges in a place where the vessel is having the least diameter and it, it completely obstructs the lumen causing symptoms in the artery supplied by it, it so so uh, in case of embolectomy the treatment is uh, removal of the embolus or the blood clot so endarterectomy endarterectomy means mainly it is done in carotid uh, carotid carotid diseases for recurrent uh, paralysis stroke and uh, other basilar symptoms or our cerebellar symptoms and all so endarterectomy means the removal of the atherosclerotic plaque along with the inner arterial layer so as to improve the blood flow in severe cases there will be a bypass surgery that means you can't perform any yeah uh, the point uh, the results of performing any of these procedures might be a poor so the obstructed segment the obstructed arterial segment which is severely involved with the disease is bypassed you have you use some other methods so that i uh, used a vein graft or a prosthesis or some other uh, uh, prosthetic material or in case, some cases in arterial graft and all just like in uh, coronary artery bypass surgery bypass surgery you will most mostly you use a reversed uh, surface venous graft and to bypass the disease segment or in re in recent years there is, there is regular usage of lima lima means uh, left anterior mammary artery this helps in bypassing the segment uh, involved so so as to restore the normal blood flow uh, blood in, in uh, instead of flowing through the disease segment it's uh, the flow is directed towards the bypass so these are the uh, type of surgical managements one is the embolectomy removal of embolus or clot either using a catheter based or an interventional radiology based and the other is arterial bypass surgery so video Uh, in this segment, uh, this procedure is known as embolectomy. Uh, there is gradual exposure of the vessel involved. There, uh, if you take if you take a look at the image, there is a proximal and distal, distal control of the vessel using vascular loops, and then with a, a level number of plate, the, uh, the surgeon makes an arteriotomy, means opening of the blood vessel. Then there will be passing of the Fogarty catheter, and then there will be removal of the embolus, the clot which is obstructing the blood vessel. Just take a look at the procedure. So he is using a 11 plate to make an arteriotomy. Arteriotomy. The catheter which is most commonly used is Fogarty's catheter, named after Michael Fogarty. And at the same time, there will be heparinization so as to avoid further coagulation. There will be heparinized saline. 
the surgeon is pre-checking the Fogarty's catheter and then he is using, he is inserting into the artery which is involved, which is obstructed using an embolus. After passing, passing beyond the clot, there will be inflation of the bulb, just like in police catheter, there will be a bulb in the catheter. And after removing it, the clot comes along with the Fogarty's catheter. Just as you take it, this is the clot uh, which is removed. This is the, that is the embolus which takes fits in the place of uh, the vessel in world and then obstructing the vessel. This is the procedure. This is known as embolectomy. And post uh, after completion of this procedure, uh, the surgeon inserts separate saline into the artery to avoid uh, further clotting. As we already discussed, the three, three procedures involved is one is embolectomy, which is the most common procedure performed, which I already shown you in the video. And the second is endarterectomy. Endarterectomy means removal of the atherosclerotic plaque involved. And the third one is bypass surgery. So this test is the ankle break, ankle pressure index. You are using brachial artery and then the tibial artery. You measure uh, the pressures in both and compare them. It is ankle brachial pressure index. Very high levels of ankle brachial pressure index can be seen in case of diabetics. As I already told you, it is secondary to the arterial sclerosis involved. So we already discussed about embolectomy and endarterectomy means the removal of uh, atherosclerotic plate and then the bypass surgery. Bypass surgery can be done using uh, native tissues just like artery uh, patient's own venous graft, mostly saphenous vein is used. And the other one, other is uh, arteries. In case of uh, bypass surgery, they not left internal mammary artery or a plastic material like Teflon, Dacron, etc. So this image will show you how endarterectomy is done in case of uh, any vascular disease. So endarterectomy means the removal of the involved atherosclerotic plate along with the blood vessel, inner wall. So it's the procedure here is arteriolic endarterectomy. The dotted line marks the incision. The surgeon opens the blood vessel. And here in the second image, you could clearly see he is removing the atherosclerotic plate along with the portion of the wall. After finishing, he switches it back after using heparinized anticoagulation. So, this is endarterectomy. We already discussed nembolectomy. And bypass, bypass means uh, if for suppose superficial femoral artery is involved, then there could be. The bypass can be done between aorto and distal femoral, beyond the point of obstruction and aorto femoral or aorto bifemoral, iliofemoral, all these methods can be used to bypass. Depending upon the process involved, depending upon the surgeon's expertise and the need of the surgery. And here, this is a surgery. Incision. One is a bypass technique. If you take a bypass technique, the involved portion of the segment which is narrowed is being bypassed. Here the segment is narrowed, it is being bypassed using a siphonous vein. Uh, as you know already, blue is for vein and red is for arteries. The involved and the constricted segment 
is bypassed using a surplus movement and its proximal ex proximal part and its distal part. So these are the three segment, three types of surgeries. One is the embolectomy, and the other is endarterectomy, and the third one is arterial bypass. So the management is percutaneous transdermal angioplasty. Percutaneous methods means instead of uh, using open methods like open surgery, eh, there will be interventional radiology procedure, which under the guidance of fluoroscopic guidance, surgeon passes a balloon catheter in the vessel involved. And, and finally, the management, if there is excessive tissue loss or uh, advanced gangrenous changes of the lower limb, then the limb cannot be saved at all. And the septic focus gradually ascends, means uh, first the toes and the distal angle region might be involved, distal foot might be involved. Gradually, it progresses to involve the pro proximal foot angle and above angle and all. So, the only thing which we can do at that point of time is to get rid of that septic focus by performing an amputation. Amputations can be of uh, various types depending upon the location of the amputation. One is you need to understand the difference between an amputation and a disarticulation. Disarticulation means the one which proceeds to through a joint, be it any joint. Amputation means it, it proceeds through the bone, but not necessarily through a joint. So depending upon the level at which uh, the gangrenous changes take place, it could be either a, a toe disarticulation in or a transmetatarsal amputation means four foot amputation, which takes place at the level of uh, four foot underlying metatarsal bones. And then coming proximally, there will be above the ankle region, there will be science amputation, which means the distal tibia, uh, the amputation will occur, will amputate up to the level of uh, distal tibia and fibula. This is not uh, being done nowadays because the process fitting and the quality of life post surgery is relatively difficult. So the most common method is, uh, used in case of uh, distal arterial lesions is Bilonei amputation. Bilonei amputation means amputation roughly 12 to 14 centimeters below the tibial tuberous. So that uh, the patient can have a process and could lead a normal quality of life. And then one risk with if it, if it, it involves beyond the amputation connection to the level of Fabonei amputation. Which one is better compared to compared between both of these? Whether a bilony amputation or an abuni amputation? The answer is a bilony amputation. Why? Why? Because the knee joint is being preserved. The patient can have a normal quality of life by fitting a process. If the knee joint itself is removed and the amputation is extended above the level of uh, knee, means the abuni amputation, then there will be a difficulty in fitting of the process. The patient, will, most of the time, he will be either confined to the wheelchair or a bed. There will be poor quality of life and uh, sedentary life involved uh, other aggravating diseases like bed sores and all. So if we involve early and identify the disease early, then there will be chance of intervention radiological procedure or a percutaneous this procedure or open embolectomy is such that the limb can be salvaged. So the main goal of the amputation is to remove the least amount of tissue and to provide magnesium so that the patient can live a uh, good quality of life and there could be a process available. Nowadays, custom-made processes are being available for any any level of amputation. Custom-made processes are being uh, available. The, uh, the one who makes the process uh, takes, takes your measurement uh, and makes a process which adjusts to, uh, to, the, to your limb. So these are the management techniques used in case of uh, peripheral vascular disease and mainly arterial disease. And then as I already told you, there are multiple uh, prevention is better than cure. And in case of Burgess disease, there is positional Burgess positional exercises 
the patient is allowed to do minimal exercise so that there will be increased collateral formation and multiple medications like uh, pentoxifilin, trentol, cyclanilate derivatives, all these derivatives along with uh, anticoagulant measurements. These are the common these are the common methods used. So, in any case of, uh, suppose you come across a case of uh, peripheral vascular disease, what are the, your physical examination findings? One, importantly, the condition of the skin, which will be shiny, whereas in case of uh, contrast to the varicose veins, in case of varicose veins and venous disease limbs, there will be thickening of the skin. There will be loss of air, all these are secondary to poor circulation. The absence of hair growth, all these are secondary to poor circulation. There will, in case of uh, venous disease, there will be thickening of the skin, which is known as lipodermatosclerosis in the later stages of the disease. So there are five P's of uh, five to six P, five P's of peripheral vascular disease, yes. and uh, in later stages of the disease, there will be ulcerations. It will be perishingly cold to touch with the symptoms of five P's of uh, peripheral vascular disease in coagulothermia. You should, uh, in case in any case of peripheral vascular disease, you should examine both both the sides and uh, almost all the pulses which. You, should, you need to grade the pulse accordingly. One grade, grade zero is absent. One plus is weak and thready type of pulse. Grade two is normal. Grade three is rebounding type of pulse. You should also observe for capillary refilling, which in if greater than three seconds, you will compress the distal nail bed. You will allow it to blanch, and then you will uh, release the pressure. And estimate the time uh, time for it to regain its color. Normally, it's uh, less than three seconds. If it's more than three seconds, it indicates peripheral vascular disease. And due to decrease the blood supply and nutrient supply from the arteries, arteries there will be loss of muscle tone, strength of the muscle, and all. So, in acute care. Monitor the limb distal so there will be absence of pulseness. Color of the limb gradually changes. So is the temperature which becomes cold. If it is absolutely necrotic and gangrenous, then will, there will be blackish color. So activities which precipitate the pain should be avoided. So given vasodilators should be driven. So so that the vessels gets dilated and the blood supply is improved. So in case of post post operative care for the arterial diseases, suppose you have performed any procedure such as embolectomy, uh, either an embolectomy or a endarterectomy or an arterial bypass. What are the significant features you should look for in case of as there is revascularization, there should be return of normal color. So you should, you should uh, examine for any signs of vascular insufficiency in the operated limb. First, you should report any color changes and temperature changes. Supposedly, if the color, skin color is becoming pale and the temperature is becoming colder, that means the anastomosis which you have performed at the embolectomy Embolectomy might not be sufficient or the anastomosis is poor regarding and the blood supply to the involved limb is poor. So peripheral pulses should be examined previously. So if it is com suddenly completely there is no, no pulse means it indicates thrombosis. So you need to mark the location at which you are unable to use the pulse with a pen so that you can correspond. So for other color changes and all. 
to promote circulation you need to reposition the patient every 2 hours you should, the patient should not cross his lungs and uh, after some period you should encourage a progressive minimal activity so arterial bypass surgery the post operative care you should extremely assess for color temperature and you should uh, look for edema so one of the most common questions which you could come across in your uh, final exam question paper is the thromboangiitis vergis abulterans vergis disease so it is mostly seen in smokers young smoker uh, so roughly less than 40 less than 40 age group so young males are commonly associated in the recent days as there is increase more uh, females are also smoking it could be seen it may also be seen in females also but the most common association with this is you need to remove you need to remember cigarette smoking so the commonly involved vessels of the lower limbs the legs and the feet so here also the the most common clinical manifestation is the intermittent glottication as the distal vessels are involved the most common symptoms are seen in the arch of the foot the rest pain will be observed in the toes as pain paralysis paresthesias and uh, poikilothermia all this coldness perishingly cold secondary to the poikilothermia there will be paresthesias pinch and needle sensation pain paralysis absence of pulse pulselessness and then paresthesias and poikilothermia so if it is unattended and not significantly uh, no significant changes that mostly these this disease is not curable the only method you, which you can suggest to the patient is prevention of smoking you should advise the patient either you stop smoking or you will, you will lose a leg so this diminished blood supply which causes as end arteries in the upper and lower limbs are the peripheral arteries are end arteries and there is no no collateral circulation so symptoms are most commonly observed in the distal areas so in this image also you could see that the distal beyond the distal distal finger crease there will be there is gangrenous tissue so there are two specific criteria there are two specific criteria uh, to diagnose uh, vergis disease one is the shinoya criteria and the other is wellens criteria wellens criteria is relatively new previously in shinoya criteria the answer should be before age 40 now it's answered before age 40 most common association with ber uh, vergis disease is uh, smoking is me so history of uh, smoking and infra as the distal segments are more commonly involved there will be infra popliteal sclerosis so distal extremity ischemia so the one criteria which is which is uh, you added in olens criteria is you should do laboratory tests so that you could exclude any autoimmune diseases or another connective tissue diseases and diabetes so that uh, you are ruling out the other causes which other diseases which can cause uh, vascular symptoms so after you ruling out all of these things you could label it as vergis disease so there should be absence of other risk, risk factors other than smoking you will exclude the uh, proximal source uh, with echocardiography and arteriography so consistent arteriographic findings are observed in uh, all the four limbs all these are known as the papa specific angiography criteria known as papa's criteria 
So the main intervention which you need to follow is you should advise the patient to stop smoking. Vasa dilates to prevent the progression of the disease and with uh, minimal activity. And uh, as these ischemic tissue tissues are easily vulnerable to trauma, you should patient leave the pain of the patient and you should advise the patient to provide trauma, emotional support and uh, If the gangrene extends well and it is well formatted, there is no other option other than amputation. So with this, today we conclude our class. And uh, see here, you collect the attendance and uh, answer it to these people. Two one second.